But now you get to see what are the things that I disagree with and what things Shaylin and I agree on. Hello everybody and welcome to this video where you are about to witness some drama. No, you're not, but there might be some drama, but there's not. I wanted to come in here and tell you before this thing started, because I just edited this video and realized that if you don't know me, I come off very fucking harsh. And it's because I get passionate about writing. I get passionate about seeing when people in positions of authority stomp on people and ruin their creativity. And I'm not saying that's exactly what happened here with Shaylin, but from people I have talked to who've experienced the same thing that Shaylin will be talking about in her video, it makes me get all Papa Bear and stuff and wanna start fucking yelling at motherfuckers. Now, I don't know Shaylin. Shaylin seems like a very lovely person who has um, a great channel with a great community attached to it. And I am not doing this to cause shit with Shaylin. I'm doing this because the things Shaylin talks about in this video are the same things that I have been telling people for years now, over and over again. So to hear it come out of someone's mouth that's on the other side of the fence, it's really important for you guys to hear this. Um, I don't know many other of Shaylin's videos, so hopefully you guys will go over and watch some of what Shaylin does, maybe give Shaylin a sub. From what I have seen on Shaylin's channel, I don't agree with a lot, and I'm probably gonna say that like three or four times in here. But now you get to see what are the things that I disagree with and what things Shaylin and I agree on. Welcome to this video where I am going to use someone else's video to make a point that I have been saying for a long time. Now, um, if this is the first video of mine you ever watched, I apologize now for anything that comes out of the liquor here. Um, I hope you enjoy yourself and you will learn something if you give me fucking the chance to fucking tell you something. So this is strange because it didn't hit me at first, but um, this is not the first time that I have had something to say about a Shaylin Wright's video. Um, if you recognize this person, it's because she's the one on ads telling you that the only reason why your book isn't selling is because it's not professionally edited. And that's not true. It's because your fucking book cover sucks. But that's a whole other fucking problem. We're going to watch this video and then I will pause the video and talk to you. Shailen, now that I've been out of my writing degree for several years, I wanted to do a video where I just talked about some bad writing habits that I developed because of my writing degree that I had to unlearn once I was out of my writing degree. Apparently my writing degree was a super positive experience. The last two years of my writing degree were the best years of my life. Just because that was a good experience for me doesn't mean it will be a good experience for someone else, but also vice versa. Everyone's experience is going to be different based on just a lot of factors. And I Seriously, right here, this is so crucial. Shaylin is talking about how her experience was great, but that's not how it is for everybody at school. said that a lot of people who were just like a year above her and a year below her did not have the same experience. So it's totally different and not a uh, one size fits all for everybody. Writing programs don't really do a good enough job of preparing you for is how do you keep up the habit, the writing habits that you developed in the program when you are set free. And I'm not saying that these are things that were like consciously taught to me by my prof. There were probably people in my cohort that didn't get these kind of bad habits, but there are things that I really needed to unlearn once I- This is so fucking true, okay? Writing professors are teaching you how to pass their class. And a lot of people think that that means that that's how you do it after you get out of school. And that's not the fucking case. The first one is needing grades for validation. This is something that I think I relied on my entire life. It's no surprise that once I got to university and now I was getting graded on the thing that I'm most passionate about, which is my writing, that I would lean on that for a huge source of validation because I had always relied on grades for validation. No longer getting graded on your stories. And what do you do then? You have to find a way to feel validated and confident 
without that. And I think what I did was I turned that to like getting accepted by literary magazine. And acceptance became the equivalent of an A. Okay, well, here's, here's the fucking thing. I, I want to take a minute on this, guys. This is a problem that a lot of people have and they will never break from. Needing grades for validation, okay? And what Shaylin says here is that once the grades stopped, Shaylin went to literary magazines. And if um, Shaylin got accepted by a literary magazine, then that means an A, okay? The problem is, the professor could give out as many fucking A's as he wants. Literary magazines, there are a finite number of spots per issue. Just because you have a good story or a good poem does not mean that that poem is going to be accepted into a magazine. Plus, whatever the professor's standard for an A was does not mean that that will be the same thing as a good story for a literary magazine or even worse, a sellable story for a literary magazine. Because you guys have to understand, depending on what magazine you're in, you're either sell the magazine itself is either selling clout or selling ad space. Okay? So just because you have a great story, if that great story is going to be so boring that no one's going to look at the whiskey ads or the ads for fucking your next getaway, that story will not be put in the magazine. Do you understand what I'm saying? A magazine's main focus is selling ad space. Your story that's inside those pages is secondary to the pictures of people having fun, okay? Now, if you're in like a literary magazine that's like privately funded or like grant funded, then things are a little bit different. But again, these are fewer and fewer and farther between each year that goes by, okay? So the idea that the only way you can validate yourself is by getting into one of these things is absolutely preposterous because you are constantly going to be fighting a losing battle. Another thing I see people do is they are validated by reviews, okay? And reviews are the thing that like make them feel like they're doing good. But now they're being judged by everybody and not just a professor or not just an editor. But I'm not 100% on this. I don't know if this is Shaylin's case, but a lot of people who are like Shaylin are anti-self-publishing because they've been also taught by their professors that you're only a real writer if you get like a book deal with like a traditional publisher. You know, and if that's how you want to feel about it, then fine. But um, at that at that point, your validation will probably just come from getting that awesome book deal that you're not going to make any money from. A lot of other people, I guess, take validation from making money. If they can make money off their writing, they've done well. I probably fall into that camp, and I'm sure a lot of other self-published authors um, fall into that camp. Being able to fucking pay your bills is a, a very validating thing. Like, when you just write some fucking posy, and you just, like, spin a yarn, and then the next thing you know, you can hand your fucking landlord some fucking cash... That, that's that's a good feeling. Who is similar in its needing outside approval to feel that a piece was done? This is maybe was my biggest problem coming out of my writing degree. I had zero sense for how to judge when a piece of writing was done. Because in my mind, it was done when the professor said, If you need someone to tell you when a story's done, like I could see people... Oh, I could see people being curious about a poem because they don't know if it's been revised enough. They don't know if the word choices are right. They don't know this. They don't know that. But a fucking story? How do you not know when a story's done? I swear to God, if my only fucking job for the rest of my life is to uncollege motherfuckers, then that's what I'm going to do. This is kind of crazy. The story's done when it's done. 
The story's done when you feel like you can't tell anything else, that the words you have chosen are correct. That's when the story's done. No one should have to fucking tell you when the story's done. If you are waiting for people to fucking tell you when something's done, I don't know if you're ready for this. Like, that's needing fucking micromanaged fucking bullshit. Like, are you an artist? Like, can you paint a canvas or do you need a coloring book? Do you need a paint by numbers? Like, I'm not trying to be shitty, but this is what happens when somebody goes through the fucking university fucking process. You are taught this. And like, I give Shaylin so much credit in the fucking world for making a video talking about bad habits learned in fucking college. Blessed with really great workshops in university. Lots of people, I think, talk about really not liking their university writing workshops. One thing that I think has surprised me as I've gotten out of my degree and heard from just general people like on Twitter or whatever is seeing that it seems like the majority of people who go through writing programs don't enjoy their workshops. Didn't really develop great instincts for editing a piece on my own. I would write the piece and be like, well, I don't know what to do with this workshop. Tell me what's wrong with it. And I could, that's the thing. I could rely on my workshop to give me really good feedback. I don't think I really developed good instincts. And I think this is something I struggle with, have always struggled with. Is struggling to trust my instincts with my writing. You know, I always feel like if I write something, even if I feel great about it, I have to, other people have to tell me that it's good. I couldn't trust it unless the workshop validated that sense. And if they contradicted it, then I would go with what they said, not my instincts. I'm going to give Shaylin huge props here for just realizing that there's a problem. Okay. Like I'm not doing this just to talk shit. This is the problem I have with a lot of workshops. And this is like, this is also the problem I have when I hear people talk about workshops. The reason why you workshop a story or a poem is to take it somewhere and read it to people or have them read it and then tell you what they think needs to be changed. Okay. So the idea that you are going to this thing to have people tell you what to change about your work is already strange, okay? It already shows that you don't have the confidence in what you do, okay? But the thing that cracks me up is the fucking pride that people have when they take their stuff to a workshop. Because I hear people say this all the fucking time. You know, some criticism I get is really good and others is bullshit and crap. Why? If you are putting your stuff out there for people to tell you what to fix, if you don't have the confidence enough to just take your story and be done with it, why suddenly do you have the confidence to know whose opinion to take and who's not to take? This is an oxymoron. This is a fucking paradox. It doesn't make sense. If you are going to take something to a workshop, I think you need to take all of the advice because that is what you've opened yourself up to. Now, some of you might be saying, well, the advice will contradict itself. That doesn't matter. You have decided that you are going to turn your horse into a camel. So deal with it. This is what you've done to yourself. When you are workshopping your writing, it's fucking strange to me. I don't understand it. Going to workshops that are like you writing, that's different than workshopping a piece that you've already done. Now, what Shaylin is saying here is not inherently wrong. Again, the fact that Shaylin sees the problem and sees the problem inside, like, is enough to, for me to give Shaylin a pass here. So let, let's get to this editing stuff because this is where I think we're gonna, yeah. First one was editing as a checklist rather than holistically. After a workshop, the way that I would edit is I would basically go through my workshop notes that I took during the workshop then I would go through everyone's written feedback and I would just make a list of like every problem that people brought up. Every once in a while, someone would bring up a problem that I didn't agree with, but for the most part, Why? I don't think I was very good at filtering which feedback I wanted to use and what I didn't. Again, because like, I didn't really trust my instincts. Okay. 
Shaylin just said she doesn't trust her instincts. But she trusts her instincts enough to know when someone's advice was wrong. That doesn't make sense. That is a paradox. Do you see what I'm saying? And so I very much edit as a checklist by just trying to fix as many points brought up in the workshop as possible. I think naturally leads to some disjointed writing. The way to edit yes. a piece with similar, but build off that, is just editing way too drastically. I think almost all these points boil down to my general problem is that I've always found hard to trust myself as a writer. Trust that like my work is good and have faith that my choices that I'm making. Okay, check this out. Shaylin says that her professors didn't tell her how to write necessarily like how to like like what they're expecting out of each thing or whatever okay but Shaylin's whole sense of worth was based off of the grades that that professor gave her so in a sense she was getting stuff from her professors and filtering that into her writing or else she would not be getting A's when Shaylin was talking about having a disjointed story because Shaylin took everything that everybody said and tried to put it into her story, again, you have the horse camel thing where a horse is a horse, but a camel is a horse built by committee. So now the next thing Shaylin's talking about is editing too much. And this, I wholeheartedly agree with now a lot of people are like well you know how do you get your like Shaylin said that her story got published and all this other shit dude it's not hard to get published all right especially when you take a story completely water it down generic the fuck out of it based on what you've already seen that that editor likes I swear to fucking god if you Pick up the last three issues of whatever magazine you want to get into and read those stories, find common themes, common words used. You can fucking make up whatever you want based off of that and guaranteed that editor will take that story because the editor's just human looking for stuff that he likes. This isn't fucking rocket science, people. Jesus fucking Christ. You have to believe in what you're writing and your vision and yes. have some faith and security in that. And I didn't really have those things. But I used to feel like I had to completely overhaul my stories. I guess I thought that, that I had to do this like very impressive, drastic reframe in order to get a better grade on the revision. I didn't really mm. understand or see that you can make huge changes to a story by tweaking a line here or there. I don't know how much the mindset has shifted because a lot of the things that Shaylin says in there seem difficult for Shaylin to say. So I don't know if Shaylin still does workshops, um, but is now just more choosy. I don't watch Shaylin's videos. This just came up in my fucking um, blah, blah, blah feed um, because a lot of the stuff Shaylin says, I totally disagree with. This just goes back to like my whole point of just trying to unfuck yourself. Okay. When I think the difference, or at least I try to make this difference, the difference between what I teach you is I'm teaching you things that you can pick and choose from to help you wherever you are in your thing. I am not saying you have to do this this way or else nothing will work. I'm giving you advice for what you can fucking do. Whereas I feel university is like, you have to do this like this or else. Or else you don't succeed. It's so fucking stupid. But this just goes to exactly what I've been fucking screaming for years. And so what I would like to do, if you guys find any videos of people with writing advice and you want me to look at it and give my two cents on it, definitely, definitely throw that my way. And um, I will do another video like this and we will talk about it. Especially if there's a video that you have like a question about, like, like what's this, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
um, let me know what that shit is. Um, so if you like videos like this and you want more shit like this, hit the fucking subscribe button. You know you want to. Don't be a douchebag. Just fucking do the thing. Keep buying my books. Tonight, out now. Um, March is only $5 right now, too, on sale. Plus, through the rest of November, you have that Black Friday sale. Um, and the promo code for that will be down below. I don't know what else to say, guys. Type hard. Keep buying my books. Just fucking have confidence in yourself. What is it? Get confident, stupid. That thing from The Simpsons. All right, so whatever. Talk to you later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.